Good day everyone. Please subscribe, like and share these videos as widely as possible to help my channel grow. We continue with our reading today and we'll read from Genesis 11 in the King James 1611 Bible. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from hence upon the face of the, all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was an hundred years old, and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad five hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years, and begat Salah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Salah four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Salah lived thirty years, and begat Eber. And Salah lived after he begat Eber four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years, and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years, and begat Reu. And Peleg lived after he begat Reu two hundred and nine years, and begat sons and daughters. And Reu lived two and thirty years, and begat Serug. And Reu lived after he begat Serug two hundred and seven years, and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived thirty years, and begat Nahor. And Serug lived after he begat Nahor two hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years, and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah, a hundred and nineteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years, and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took their wives, and the name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. 
Okay, so we see the descendants of Noah right off the bat disobeying God's commandments. He commanded mankind to spread over the earth and multiply. But here they want to all stay together and build a tower. They even say in verse 4 that they should build a city and a tower not only out of pride but also so that they do not spread over the earth. This is blatant disobedience to their Creator, God Almighty. See, man wanted to stay together in disobedience to God, and they have been trying to do so ever since. All the great empires tried to take over the world, to bring all together under one religion, one currency, and one political institution. They are still trying to do it today. They call it one world order or the new world order still following the old disobedient paths as our ancestors then we see how god saw what man was up to and in verse 7 let us go down who are these us that god refers to he uses the same wording in genesis 1 verse 26 and different parts of the bible just who does this word us refer to? If you watched my videos on this channel or a part of our Skype cell group that meets every Sunday night at 6, you would know that this refers to the triunity of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They were all there right from the start. I do not claim to understand the Trinity or the triunity of God, nor do I think that anyone can understand it. I don't need to understand it either. There are many things we don't understand but still use all the time, like gravity. Nobody knows what gravity is. We can see what it does and measure the effects thereof and so on, but we don't know what it is. The same goes for the Trinity of God. We can't explain it, but we can see, use and live in His creation which is all around us and which we are part of as well. Verse 7 then continues, Let us go down and there confound the language that they may not understand one another's speech. Languages differ on a variety of aspects, one of which are syntaxes. For instance, when I say in English, look at that big green tree same sentence in Spanish we read like this, look at that tree, big green. See, the way you speak is the way you think, and this example shows that people think in different order. This is especially true when we see that some languages even write backwards or from right to left, if you will. Isn't it interesting that most Eastern languages write from right to left? East to west, and that western languages write from left to right, west to east. It's almost as if the world writes in the direction of Jerusalem. <laughs> Just an interesting thought. Language is also one of the identifying factors of any culture. It has a huge impact on its culture and vice versa. It is simply not possible that all the languages that exist today evolved from one language roughly 4,000 years ago. They are simply too complex and saturated in culture. I believe what the Bible tells me, that God created it miraculously at the Tower of Babel. Verse 8 tells us, And they left off to build the city. They basically quit the project they were busy with. Verse 9 says, Therefore, now, when you see this word, it means you must look at what happened before this word, this verse. So they suddenly spoke different languages and stopped building the city and the tower. Therefore, it was called Babel, which means confusion. I may be corrected, but I think there are around 2000 basic language groups on the earth today they can probably be tracked back to around 70 to 80 basic language groups. For instance, Afrikaans, my language, Dutch, 
and Flemish probably have a common or root language. The same is true for Spanish and Portuguese, which both probably derive from Latin. People often claim that there is no way that there could have been so many people on the earth 300 years after the flood to build cities and have armies and so on if they all had to be descendants of Noah. Well, let's see what the Bible says. We see in the genealogy that follows how Shem lived 500 years after Avbak said and had sons and daughters. How many children can you have in 500 years? And that goes for your children as well. Of course, there could have been a population boom. And there was thousands and thousands of people on the earth 300 years after the flood. People only stopped reaching these ages in the time of Peleg. For reasons on this and why the Bible says that in his time the earth was divided, please look at the video prior to this one in the Wisdom series. In chapter 12 verse 1 we read that God already told Abram to leave his family and to go to the land of Canaan. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Haran is halfway to the land of Canaan. So Abram, his wife, his father, and brother's son Lot all left Ur and only came halfway to Canaan. After God told Abram to leave his family and country and to go to Canaan. Then Abraham further disobeyed God and took Lot with him to Canaan. We see later how this was bad for the two families of Lot and Abram, but also how it did not work out well for Lot even further on. So Abram didn't quite obey. The Bible is full of such stories where people don't quite obey and how they then have to make amends. Terah never made it to the promised land. He died in Haran. I don't want you to not reach your full potential. To not reach the end of what God planned for you. Please think and pray on this. Unfortunately, this is all we had time for today. Please like, subscribe and even comment on these videos. Share as widely as possible as this will help my channel to grow. To help me spread the good news and make better videos, I ask that you please leave a donation on Patreon. Instructions on how to do so will follow. God bless. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified of our next video. You can help us create better videos by leaving a donation on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you. We hope to see you next time.